Hi all, Amanda here, Teen Services Librarian at Herrick District Library. And today I am going to teach you how to make a character in my absolute most favorite game of all time, Dungeons and Dragons. So if you signed up for one of our D&D Take and Makes, inside your packet you're going to find everything you need to make a level 1 fighter. Now, when normally playing uh, Dungeons & Dragons, what you need is a player's handbook. It's going to look like this. This is 5th edition's player's handbook. And this is going to be your guide to all character creation. I will tell you that these books can be a little expensive. They can be anywhere from $25 to $30, depending on where you're getting it from. However, you can find them all sorts of different places, including the library, where you can check one out for free. And if you scour enough online or in used bookstores, sometimes you can find them for cheaper than the original price. Also, there's a lot of online resources you can use through Wizards and uh, like Roll20 and like D&D Beyond, for example. So lots of free stuff out there. Check out my Teen Codex page. I'll put the link below so you can uh, see other resources that are available. And then what you want to take out right now is your blank character sheet and your other blank character sheet. So these two go together. Also going to want to take out this thing that says fighter at the top. In your packet, you're also going to find some pre-made characters. Go ahead and keep those. Just kind of put them off to the side. We'll talk about those later too uh, for when you want to start your campaign. So now that you have your fighter sheet and your blank character sheet, we're going to put those aside. Make sure you have a pencil. Here's my pencil. And your dice. Okay, I'm going to switch over to my uh, document camera so I can show you how to create a level one fighter. Okay, we have our character sheet here ready to go. Uh, at the top, we're going to put our class and our level. We are making a fighter. Level one. Background, we'll fill in later. Player name. That's your name. Race, we're going to make a human fighter. We'll talk about alignment later, and experience points are the points you earn when you are fight, playing the game, fighting monsters, talking to people, all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about dice. This is my bag of dice. I have a lot of dice. In your take and make, you will have a small bag with seven dice in it. You will have a D4. It's going to look like this little triangle one. Whenever you roll a D4, whatever number is facing upwards that you can read, that's the roll that you've gotten. That's the number that you use. You will have a D6, which is just a regular side six-sided dice. You will have a D8, which looks like this diamond shape. You will have a D10, which looks like this one. The zero on a D10 is the number 10, by the way. You will have a percentile die. It's going to look like this one. So it's going to look exactly like your D10, but instead of a singular digit, it'll be multiple digits, and then when the zero is zero, that's 100. You're going to have a D12, looks like this one, it's a 12-sided dice. And you're going to have the coveted D20. This is the one you are going to use the most often in the game. Let's brush these out of the way here. So the first thing we're going to look at is our human in our player's handbook. 
I also have this information up on the Teen Codex page, so it makes it really easy for you to find. We don't need a whole lot of the information from the human section on races, so that's why it's not included in your kit, but you can find it online on D&D &D Beyond and on that link on the codex that I put up. So here is what you're really going to want to look at is in this traits section right here. This is going to tell you all the important things you need to know to put on your character sheet. For example, your ability score increase. These are your ability scores. Strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. And it says here that all of your ability scores will each increase by one. So just for, for remembrance sake, so I can remember that later, I'm gonna put a very light plus one next to everything. Like so. The other important information in here is, it talks about your age, um, where humans reach adulthood, your alignment. Some races in D&D &D tend to be one alignment over another, but it doesn't mean that you have to be that alignment. Your size will tell you what your build is. So um, like for example, halflings are normally not five feet tall, uh, or um, humans here can go anywhere from five feet to six feet. Your speed, so this is really important because this is something that goes on your character sheet. Human space speed for walking is 30 feet. Your speed is right here, so we're gonna put 30. And your languages. So humans speak common, and then you get to choose an extra language. Common languages are Elven and Dwarvish, so especially for humans. So I'm gonna actually put down Elvish as my other language, and that can go down here in this other proficiencies in languages. And really that's all you're going to need from the human section in the player's handbook. So let's roll for ability scores. So this is a really easy way I like to tell people how their ability scores work. I use the tomato analogy. Strength is how easily you can smash a tomato. Dexterity is how far you can throw a tomato. Constitution is how easily you can eat a rotten tomato or without throwing up or being sick. Intelligence is knowing that a tomato is fruit. Wisdom is knowing that you don't put that tomato in a fruit salad. And charisma is the ability to sell that fruit salad with the tomato inside of it. So there's different ways you can figure out ability scores in D&D. &D. Some people do a point by system. I personally like what uh, I call hero dice. And that is taking four D6. That's a D8. And rolling them all together. If you don't have four D6 at home, you can just do this individually. That works too. And then you're going to re-roll any ones, but only once. And then you're going to drop your lowest dice roll. This is not a great dice roll, but that's okay. And you're going to do this seven times. So we're going to drop this two. I'm going to add these together. That's four plus five is a nine. And I'm going to just put this kind of up here lightly and roll again. Roll the one. I'm going to roll it once more. Put the lowest aside. Okay, now that I have seven rolls, I'm going to eliminate my lowest, which is a nine. And then we have to decide where we're gonna put these. 
this is where this information comes in. So if you look at the quick build section right here, it says first make strength or dexterity your highest ability score, depending on whether you want to focus on a melee weapon or an archery or finesse weapons. Your next highest score should be constitution. Second, choose the soldier background. So as you look at this, you can see that it says fighter at first level. Your proficiency bonus is a plus two. We're going to add that right here. And it says you get a fighting style and second wind. If you turn your page and you look at fighting style. So you need to decide, are you going to be melee, which is close combat, or are you going to be uh, dexterity based, which is using bows. And you will note that you cannot take more than one fighting style at a time. So you have to decide right now which one you want to have. Uh, I like the idea of doing two weapon fighting uh, because I think it looks cooler. So what this says is when you engage in two weapon fighting, you can add your ability modifier to the damage of the second attack, which is pretty cool. So we're going to go with two weapon fighting and that's going to be a melee fighter. So that means that we're going to want strength to be our highest ability score. So when we come back to our sheet, you can see that by highest ability, I have two 15s. So I'm going to use one of the 15s and I'm going to put it in my strength. And but don't forget, we get a plus one to everything. So some people put the number here in this section. I'm actually going to put it up here in the, t in the smaller one because this is something different I'll show you in just a minute. I'm going to erase that plus one. I'm going to erase that 15. And the rest, oh, that's right. We want our second one to go into constitution. So we're going to do our second 15. It's going to make it a 16. And the rest is really up to you on what you want to be. I'm going to say that my fighter isn't super smart. So I'm going to put my 10, which will be an 11 in here. Honestly, though, like an 11 is average. It's an average intelligence. So saying that he's not super smart isn't even really true. 11 is very totally average. Um, but I am going to say that he's going to have a lot of wisdom. I'm going to put 15 in my wisdom because we use perception in this game a lot and I want my perception score. I want to be able to see things and find things and search for things more easily. And the other two, I'm going to put 14 in my dexterity and 13 in my charisma. So ability modifiers. The modifier is what you're going to use in your larger areas here, but you're going to use it for everything when you roll a, when you roll a score. So when you roll your dice and you add something to it, you're always going to use an ability modifier. I have the link up on the, on the Teen Codex page, so you can see the modifiers there, but um, it goes up by one per two ability score numbers. So a 10 and 11 is a plus zero. A 12 and a 13 is a plus one. A 14 and a 15 is a plus two. And a 16, 17 is a plus three. If you have a 18, 19, it's a plus four. If you have a 20, it's a plus five. We're going to go back to this. And we're going to look at 
our hit points really quick. So hit points at uh, our hit dice is a D10. That's going to go right here. One, two, ten. At first level, you get 10 plus your constitution modifier. So you get max number of hit points at first level. So it's 10 plus three. So we have 13 hit points at level one. When you level up, uh, what you'll do is you'll roll a d10 to decide how many more hit points you get, or you can take the average, which would be a plus six plus your constitution modifier. But you do have to remember uh, that you have to do only one or the other. At least that's what I tell my players. You don't get to choose between the two. If you're going to roll, then you get to roll. If you're going to take the average, then you could take the average every single time. I'm going to roll just to show you what I would do if I was level leveling up my character. Oh, I rolled a one. Oh, well, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. So I would add four to my current hit points if I was leveling up. Okay, so next we're going to look at our saving throws. Saving throws as a fighter are strength and constitution. So on your character sheet, you're going to see your saving throw for strength here, and you're going to fill it the little diamond in, and for constitution. So if your DM asks you to make a strength saving throw, you're going to roll your d20. I'm going to roll my big d20. And you're going to add your saving throw to it. So what you would do is you're going to add your strength, which is a plus three, and your proficiency bonus, which is a plus two, because you get proficiency and strength and constitution. So I would add a five to that seven and then tell that number to the DM. So here we're going to add a five. That's going to be the same for down here because it's a three plus the two. Now with the other ability scores, like dexterity, for example, if you had to make a dexterity saving throw, you would still get your dexterity bonus to it, that plus two. You just wouldn't get the extra proficiency bonus. So it's only going to be a two. The same with intelligence is going to be a zero. Wisdom will be a two and charisma will be a one. And then we get to choose two skills from the following. Acrobatics, animal handling, athletics, history, insight, intimidation, perception, and survival. As I said earlier, perception is the one thing you use the most. So I always, always choose perception. So we're going to darken that one. And then we're going to take our plus two. And because we're proficient in it, we're going to add our plus two. And that's going to be a four. So if you're going to make a perception check, again, you're going to roll your d20. I got a 14. You're going to add the four. So it's actually an 18. Never tell your DM the score you actually rolled. Tell them the full score added together with that number. Because the 14, you might not find anything. But an 18, you might hear the assassin coming from behind you or something. I don't know. <laughs> so my other ones are acrobatics. Acrobatics is like tumbling around, doing cartwheels, that's kind of thing. Animal handling is exactly like it sounds, but mostly refers to like horseback riding. Athletics is like jumping, climbing, that kind of thing. History is a knowledge of the past. Insight is like kind of essentially being able to tell if somebody's lying. Like you're going to look at them and go, wait a minute, something seems off here. I want to make an insight check to see if I know if they might be lying or if I can get some more information out of them, that kind of thing. Intimidation is exactly what it sounds like. You can intimidate somebody. Perception we already talked about. And survival. Survival is like if you were out in the woods and 
you needed to know how to build a fire or there we go hunting would be a good example so like you would be able to go find a deer or a squirrel to to kill and cook over the fire so i'm gonna put because my fighter is already pretty melee and athletic i'm gonna put my other skill as athletics so that's gonna be a five as well and just like with our other saving throws, these skills, just because we're not proficient in them or trained in them, doesn't mean that we don't get this bonus. It just means we don't get the extra plus two. So all of these will get a two. All of these will get a zero. Womp, womp, womp. All of these will get a two. These get a one. And this could change in the future, so that's why we always use a pencil for everything. And then we're going to look at equipment. So I always let my players start with this equipment without it coming out of their out of their bunny. Because it you could, I mean it's it just depends on your DM, how what they allow. So you get to choose chainmail or leather armor longbow and 20 arrows well my guy is never going to use a longbow so i'm going to choose chainmail we're going to put it down here in this equipment and character notes so chain mail uh, a martial weapon and a shield or two martial weapons well we're definitely going with the two martial weapons I'm not going to write that one down yet because that's going to go in your attack area. So we'll wait for that in just a minute. A light crossbow and 20 bolts or two hand axes. We're going to put hand axes because he's not going to know how to fire a crossbow. Or he's just not going to use one. I don't know. Um, a Dungeoneer's pack or an Explorer's pack. We're going to go with the Explorer's pack, and that's only because I already know what's in an Explorer's pack. And what's in a Dungeoneer's pack. And the Dungeoneer's pack is more like roguey kind of stuff, with like, like a crowbar and stuff like that. And the Explorer's pack has like a backpack and a bedroll and things like that. More for out in the adventure. So at this point, we're going to look at our background. In D&D 5th Ed, uh, you can choose a background for your character. You don't have to, but it adds to your character and your character background, and it can add to your character development. When you're making a character, this is just your bones. This is just like who you are physically, but you got to create who your character really is and what background they came from, and why are they becoming an adventurer in the first place. This all adds to gameplay. So on the front of our fighters page, it did say to choose the soldier background, but you don't have to. It's really up to you. I'm going to put a link in the Teen Codex page that will go to all of the different backgrounds you can choose from. and but. But for now, I'm going to show you in the book. So chapter four of the PHB, or the Player's Handbook, talks about character details. This is all the flavor that you're going to put into your character. So over here is where we're talking about alignment of a character. Uh, for me, D&D &D is all about teamwork and working together for a common goal. You could also have individual goals for your character, but it's the one reason why I don't allow evil characters within a good campaign. Now, could a character turn evil? Sure, potentially. Um, but the whole point is really about working together to take something down. And to me, having an evil character split into that can sometimes really just not make the game fun but it depends on how you play anyway so here you can see 
that alignment is a combination of two factors. One identifies morality, good, evil, or neutral, and the other describes attitudes towards society and order, so lawful, chaotic, or neutral. So the they kind of briefly summarize. A lot of people like to play chaotic good or chaotic neutral characters because they kind of just go on their whims um, and hold personal like freedoms to the better them o over anything else. So think of like Han Solo. Han Solo is a classic chaotic neutral character and you could say by the end of the Star Wars series that maybe he kind of becomes more of a chaotic good character uh well it depends on what movie you're asking about but yeah anyway so uh this will help you kind of choose your character alignment and then this is where we get into backgrounds oh a real quick note in inspiration inspiration is something that your dm will give you uh, to help boost something in the game if they feel like you've done something really cool. Some DMs use it, some don't. Your inspiration goes right there. So you can choose whatever background you want. There's tons of different backgrounds and each background can give your character a proficiency in different skills as well. Quick Build Fighter says we should use a soldier as a background, but I'm going to choose something different, I think. I'm going to choose this noble background. To me, my character comes from a well-to-do family, but is kind of sick of that world, and he wants to separate himself from his family. Maybe they were involved in some big scandal or something. And he now wants to go out and make a new name for himself and his family. So, oh, there we go. The, well, that's what I wanted to show you. All right, I went ahead and went through all of my options for my noble background. Uh, one thing that was really cool is that you could have randomized it if you wanted to with a dice roll. So you could have just rolled a die uh, depending on which one it was in each category to choose your traits, your ideals, your bonds, your flaws, all that kind of good stuff. So I've gone ahead and did that. And then my video messed up. So <laughs> we're gonna talk equipment and you're gonna see I already have things written in, but we're gonna go over it. The first thing you're gonna wanna do for equipment is figure out your money. So for a fighter, to figure out your money, you're gonna roll 5d4 and then you're gonna times it by 10. So remember that your D4 looks like that little triangle. So this guy, I'm gonna roll it. I rolled a four, cause that's the number that you can see up. And you're gonna do that five times. And then you're gonna roll it by, or then you're gonna times it by 10. So I had 155 gold total. So now we're gonna look at armor. The armor we picked out was chainmail. Chainmail is down here. You can see that it costs 75 gold and that it, your armor class will be a 16. Armor class goes up here. So this is how hard it is to hit you. So um, when you roll to hit something, you're gonna roll your d20 and you're gonna add your plus five. We'll get into how to do that, how to figure that plus five out here in a minute. So you roll your d20, I'll add a 10. So if someone was trying to hit me and this was their roll plus the five, they wouldn't because you need at least a 16. With other um, armor, uh, for example, like padded light armor, your AC would be 11 plus your dexterity modifier. So it would be 11 plus the two. So that would be a 13 that would go up there. You will see that Chainmail has a strength of 13, so you have to have at least a strength of 13 in order to use Chainmail, and you do have disadvantage when it comes to being stealthy. Next up is our weapons. So when we're looking at this, I am using Martial Melee Weapons for my character, and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna see that I cannot use a heavy weapon because it requires two hands and I can't have a great sword in both hands. It's just not going to work. So instead I chose a rapier 
it does 1d8 piercing damage and it is a finesse weapon. So it, what that means is that I could use my dexterity modifier instead of my strength modifier for my attack and damage. But we're not going to. I'm going to use my strength. So I'm going to put rapier down here. My attack bonus is plus five. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add my plus three for my strength and my plus two for my proficiency because I am proficient in using this weapon. And then for my damage, my damage was a 1d8. So that's that diamond looking one plus my strength damage with it. So plus three. So if I were to try to roll to hit something, I'm going to roll my d10. I'm sorry, I'm going to roll my d20. I got a 7, but I'm not going to tell my DM a 7. I'm going to tell my DM that 7 plus 5. So I'm going to tell my DM that 12. My DM will say whether or not that hits. We're going to say that hits, so I'm going to roll for damage. And I get a five. Remember, we're going to add that plus three. So we got an eight. So I'm going to do eight damage. And then because I use two weapons, I get to go again with a six plus a five. And that's an 11. We'll say that one doesn't hit, so I don't get to do the damage. And there we go. One more thing I wanted to show you was this passive wisdom check. So this is something the DM will use if you're supposed to maybe see something that's hiding in the dark or you can't tell where it's at. In order to figure out your passive wisdom, all it is is 10 plus your modifier that normally applies to the check. For example, uh, if a first level character has a wisdom of 15, which hey, we do, um, and is proficient in perception, which we are, you're going to add the 10 plus the 2 plus the next two because you're proficient. So your passive perception is a 14. Let's say I wasn't proficient in perception and then it would be a 10 plus the two. So it'd be a 12 instead. The last thing you're gonna do is this back page. So uh, I've already named my character. I've named him Maverick. And now I get to describe what he looks like. Who is this guy? I've described, you know, physically who he is with these numbers and things that we have on our character sheet. And I've got some of the ideals of who he is as a person, but what does he look like? Um, is he muscular? Is he scrawny? Is he short? Is he tall? What is his backstory? Why is he out adventuring? What makes him him? What makes him tick? What makes him a fleshed out person. And this is where it comes into the fun part of playing D&D because uh, you get to really get inside somebody's head. And it also can be like the tricky part of D&D &D too because you've never been inside this character's head before. You got to figure out all the ins and outs of them and then you got to pretend to be them. Um, so it's really cool in that way too. And that's it. You've uh, created your first D&D &D character. Congratulations. Uh, so again, please put character backgrounds into your storyline for your character. It's going to make the game so much more fun for you and other players. And you get to really play your character out and how you want them to be. I hope your first character turns out awesome. And you create an amazing backstory and have lots of fun.